Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about finding the limit of a um, piecewise defined function. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because in this particular example, which is in um, my business calculus class, which uses my math lab, we have a piecewise defined function, and then we have three limits defined. And in two of the cases, um, we have a situation where x is approaching um, a number that causes an indeterminate form. If we plug it in, we get 0 over 0. This happens in both of these cases. And then in the third case, the um, kind of tricky part is that this value, x equals 0, occurs at the boundary value, 0, between where the rules change. See, when x is greater than 0, we have the rule x squared minus 64 over x minus 8 to plug into. And when x is less than 0, we have x squared minus 64 over x plus 8. So this has a lot of, um, a lot of good things to be aware of, of what can happen when you're taking limits. So let's see what happens with part A. So for part A, we have to find the limit as x approaches negative 8 of f of x, we'll just say f of x for now, <clears throat> okay, but f of x is defined by more than one rule. So we have the rule for when x is less than 0, and then the rule for when x is greater than 0. So since negative 8 is less than 0, we have to use the top rule for all negative numbers. So I can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches negative 8 of x squared minus 64 over x plus 8. Now normally what you want to try to do uh, when you have a rational function, square root function, polynomial function, is just plug in the number. But in this case, if we plug in negative 8 for x, we're going to get 64 minus 64 over negative 8 plus 8. So plugging in x equals negative 8 would give us 0 divided by 0, which is an indeterminate form. It also indicates that in the case of a rational function, we probably can reduce here and uh, get rid of that indeterminate form. So let's see. Um, does x squared minus 64 factor? And you know it does because when we plug in x equals negative 8, we ended up with 0, so x plus 8 must be a factor. And in fact, this is a difference of squares, so it factors into conjugate. So we have the limit as x goes to negative 8 of x plus 8 times x minus 8 all over x plus 8. Right now, as long as x is not equal to negative 8, which it's not, remember the limit is talking about what's happening as x gets very close to negative 8, not what happens when x is actually equal to negative 8. So um, as long as x is not equal to negative 8, we don't have zeros, and so we can divide a number by itself and get 1. So that means that we have the limit as x approaches negative 8 of x minus 8. This limit would be equal to the other limit. So now we have an expression that we can plug into and we're going to just replace the x with negative 8 and we're going to have negative 8 minus 8 which equals negative 16. So that's the limit as x approaches negative 8 of f of x. Now let's look at part B. Okay, so for part B, this is the one where we're interested in the boundary value 0. So for part B, we are going to have to uh, consider what's happening um, coming in towards 0 from the left and coming in towards 0 from the right. So let's talk about what's happening coming in from the left. In other words, when x is less than 0. So if we take the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x, since we're talking about from the left, x is less than 0, and we're using the first rule. So I'm going to write limit as x approaches 0 from the left 
of x squared minus 64 over x plus 8. Now, it doesn't matter that it's from the left. Um, <clears throat> we can go ahead and plug in at this point. because the limit as x approaches 0 of this function, uh, this if we just had this as our function, the limit as x approaches 0 would be the same as the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So we can go ahead and just think of this as the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared minus 64. This is going to be the same value as our function is from the left. All right, so this is going to be negative 64, plugging in 0, negative 64 over positive 8, which is going to be negative 8. All right, now, we were not asked, though, for the limit from the left. We were asked for the overall limit. So we're going to have to find, since it's a boundary value, we're going to have to find the limit from the left and the limit from the right and see if they're equal to each other. So coming in from the right, we're talking about an x value that's greater than 0, so we're going to use the other rule. So this is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x squared minus 64 over x minus 8. All right, now, so forget about the piecewise defined function. We just figured out that our piecewise defined function has the same limit from the right as this function. But this function is just a regular old rational function. As long as we don't get 0 in the denominator or anything weird, then the limit from the right is going to be the same as the overall limit of x squared minus 64 over x minus 8. So plugging in 0 for x, we're going to get negative 64 over negative 8, which is positive 8. So our limit from the left turned out to be negative 8. Our limit from the right turned out to be 8. These are not equal. So then we can conclude that our overall limit as x approaches 0 of f of x is going to be does not exist, right? Because there's no single value that we're getting close to uh, on the y, uh, no single y value we're getting close to as x gets close to 0. All right, so that's how you handle a boundary value. And now let's look at the last one, part C. So for part C, we're looking at x approaching 8. And um, this is not a boundary value, and 8 is greater than 0, which means that we're going to use the second rule. So if I want to find the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x, I'm going to replace the f of x with the second rule, x squared minus 64 over x minus 8. Now if I try to plug in 8 here, I'm going to get a 0 over 0 or an indeterminate form. All right, so we, we don't know the limit from that. We don't know if it exists or doesn't exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simplify algebraically and see what happens. The limit as x approaches 8, and the numerator factors into x minus 8x plus 8, because it's a difference of squares. And then the factor of x minus 8, as long as x is not equal to 8, is going to cancel out. Divides to give you 1, actually, but we don't have to write the 1. So we have the limit as x approaches 8 of x plus 8. And plugging in 8, then, we get positive 16. All right, so those are three examples of finding of what can happen when you're finding the limit of a piecewise defined function uh, involving rational expressions. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That'll help other students to find the video.